Commissioners, good afternoon. I appreciate the opportunity to be able to speak with each of you today to offer a different perspective because I've been listening in on the hearings all day and initially what I intended to talk about has changed a little bit. Good morning, friends. This is an exciting vlog and I had to take you guys along for this one because why wouldn't I, right? Adam was invited to speak in front of the U.S. Sentencing Commission to give his testimony in Washington, D.C. Today is Thursday, so next, next Thursday, a week from today. But the best part about that is FAM, Families Against Mandatory Minimum Sentences, who we've been working with for years, is flying out Christian and I so we can be there in the audience. So that means not only do we get to see that and watch it, I get to take you guys along for the ride, yay. So what we're doing right now is all the prep stuff when you have to take a toddler, a very, very, very active toddler on an airplane. I don't know if it's a four or five hour flight. So he did great when we flew to New Jersey, but he's also a baby. So what we're doing now is we're on our way to the dollar store to get him some toys that he's never seen before. Then we're gonna walk over to Walmart to get a whole bunch of snacks for him. I've been like, you know, doing some research and they said, bring the amount your food will child to eat. Your, your food will child to eat. What even does that mean? Bring the amount of food your child would normally eat and then double it. So we're gonna do that. And then Christian gr drinks goat milk, cow's milk, it's too hard on his stomach. So we are going to see if I can get powdered goat's milk, which I looked up online. They say Walmart does have like actual brand of goat milk that I normally use, like the actual milk. They have that powdered, not formula, like actually just powdered. So I'm gonna go see if I can get that just to make life easier. That would be wonderful to have. Snacks for him, snacks for us, and anything else that I think that we need. Obviously, I'm taking you along with me. I have to dye my roots. What I did was I waited. Why I didn't think that I could do it twice in a row, I have no idea, but I waited, so my roots are really bad. Christian's room. I just took out my carry-on. You guys, this thing is incredible. It's got all kinds of pockets and it's got insulated. Let's see, let me show you. It's got insulated pockets for the bottles. This was our best friend. It fits under the airplane seat. It works as your personal item. It does come with, let's show you. This is not a commercial. It comes with a strap, but I also put, I put on like an energy inspired strap. Yeah, so we're gonna go through these and then hide them so little man sees them for the first time on the plane. I think I went a little bit overboard, but that's okay because we can use these for the next time we fly. We're gonna fly a couple times between my sister's bridal shower and then we have a huge trip to Italy in September, which is a long, long flight. Yeah. So we can save some of this stuff. I just put everything in carry on because the whole point in this is to bring stuff that he's never played with before to keep his attention. Okay, do you want to go try your new sippy cup? You want to put water in there and drink out of it? No, you just want to play with it? Come on, you want to put water in there and drink? Yeah, come on, let's try it. Okay, we're trying on clothes for the presentation. I'm not wearing a bra, <laughs> but I really, okay, so this dress has, let's see how I can show you guys. It has like this snake skin. It's kind of like a faux leather feel and it has this built in, excuse the, the um, laundry behind me, but this built in really pretty neckline and in an exposed zipper in the back. I guess I would have to wear pumps, right? Black heels. This is in the running. It's supposed to be 81 degrees. 
it's not even March. It's the end of February. It's supposed to be 81 degrees unseasonably in DC this weekend. So, uh, or on Thursday when this presentation is. So this is an option. I like the way it's fitting. I uh, think it's pretty. So there's option one. Okay, so this is option two. I came in the other room, still not wearing a bra. This is so pretty. I don't know, something is just telling me to wear this dress. It's got this really pretty detail. You can't see it in the mirror, let me show you. Really pretty detail on the waist. I got this dress from my mother who got it from somebody, she never wore it, but she gave it to me. This is gonna sound crazy. She gave it to me to wear to her funeral. I know, crazy. It gives me like a Jackie Kennedy feel. I don't remember it being this strange of a length, but it's not looking good in this mirror. Let me flip. Okay, there it is, option two. Maybe with like, my mom gave me black and white pearls. I think this is gonna be the dress. We'll see. Yeah, this is really pretty. It's not, obviously not zippered all the way and I'm not wearing a bra, but I just like the pleats in the back. I like this a lot. We'll go to the airplane. We'll go up in the sky tomorrow on the airplane. Yeah, you wanna go up there? Okay, we're gonna go in two airplanes tomorrow, and then we'll go in two airplanes coming home. Is that cool? Yeah? How's your snack? Good? Good. Snacks make everything better? Yeah? Yeah? Okay, bye. I love you. Love you with your sign language. You guys ready to go in an airplane? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I hope you don't shy now. What do you think, see? You wanna go up in the sky in an airplane? Up, up, up. You ready to go to the airport? Yeah. Are you so tired? Yeah. You're a big trooper. You ready to go to the airplane? You doing okay? CJ? You doing good? <laughs> You're not used to riding backwards anymore, huh? You get to ride the style, buddy. You wanna go in the airplane? You're such a good boy. Joanna, I'd like to welcome you to boarding area. It is flight 1808. Okay. What do you think? DC. We're back in the right time zone. So here we are back on the East Coast. We are in Washington, DC. Uh, big day tomorrow. I'm going to be testifying before the United States Sentencing Commission regarding compassionate release. The reason the three of us are here today. Very, very exciting. So you know, usually when we land on the East Coast, it's not always the warmest welcome, and admittedly, the weather might not be the greatest right now, but, man, we have run into a couple of really, really genuinely nice people. Because we're not in the Tristan area. <laughs> <laughs> Just who have helped Sorry, us. Not in Jersey anymore. <laughs> they helped us navigate. We're at the Metro. And it's literally going to be physically warm tomorrow, so sweet. It's going to be 80 degrees tomorrow, so and it is going to get better. in Las Vegas, so it is right time. It was right on time for us to come out here. Um, but listen, these people just, like, hipped us to some new game about the Metro. She told us, listen, if you have Google Maps, go on Google Maps. 
and I'm sure you've been on Google Maps before, right? Everybody's used it, whether you have a preference to use something else. But did you know that you can flip through and you can use any mode of transportation, and including like, the metro? Yeah, yeah. I know we've never used it before, so this was like a, a revelation to us, putting Google Maps like the metro, where we're trying to go. And man, it gives us step-by-step -step directions on how to get to the hotel downtown. Now we're gonna have to make a change about halfway through. And it's gonna take us a little bit longer, but I don't know if you can see all this stuff that we're, <laughs> what we're traveling with here. And what did you see, But it was a whole lot easier than us trying to cram this into an Uber with a car seat and everything else. So we're like, you know what, let's hop on the Metro. And uh, man, we're gonna get around like real city folk, okay? So stay tuned, cause we're gonna keep checking in and letting y'all know about our trip here in DC. We got a couple other stops and our ride is here. So here comes the train, time for us to get on. We'll see y'all a little bit later. In DC. Say hi. We are at Bus Boys and Poets with there's Sean. There's the reason we're here. He's the one that made it all possible. And if you look, we got a bunch of other people from FAM. Everybody came in to be part of the sentencing commission hearing tomorrow. It's a little loud in here. Man, feeling incredibly grateful. All of us here in this room, all on the same mission. Many of us have uh, been incredibly, incredibly fortunate to get a break. Uh, I don't think anyone's gotten as big a break as I have. And I don't know, I'm kind of biased, but I think I have more than anyone else to be grateful for, if you look at that right there. That's what it's all about. Oh my God. And tomorrow they're gonna be there with me. So it's kind of funny because when the commission asked me who was coming along as my guest, and I told them, they were a little concerned that a child was coming because these are, you know, hearings, very prestigious, formal events. We're gonna make sure it's not that formal. And uh, man, if he wasn't there, obviously it wouldn't, just wouldn't be the same. So tomorrow's gonna be a great day. We're about to have some dinner here. Bus boys and poets in Washington, D.C. Gonna have a great meal with some great people. There's Kevin Ring, fam. The rest of the crew from fam. It's funny, for 20 years, you know, I was sending emails and letters, and uh, now here I am in person, hanging out with uh, the people on the other end, the people that were reading those emails, reading those letters, going down the street, advocating, trying to help get me and all the others who have crazy mandatory minimum sentences like I had. Helping to get us out. Tomorrow's gonna be another one of those big days. So we're gonna get something to eat and head back and crash. It's been a long day. So whatever you're doing, I hope you're doing it with the people you love. Have a great night. We'll be back with uh, with more from DC tomorrow. All right, love you guys. This goes in the room? It just slotted over the door here. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, are you ready to go to Dad's event? Yeah? You got everything you're bringing? Dad's belt, one of Mom's sneakers, your dirty shirt that you flew in, 
Everything you need? Yeah. All right, let's go. No, it's not? Okay. See ya. Let's go. Thank you. Mr. Klaus. Commissioners, good afternoon. I appreciate the opportunity uh, to be able to hear, to be able to speak with each of you today, to offer a different perspective, because I've been listening in on the hearings all day, and initially what I intended to talk about has changed a little bit. I want you to remember two things when you think back and recall my five-minute testimony. I want you to look at me and see the face of exactly what everyone who has come before in opposition, of compassionate release, of expanding it, of making sure that someone like me has the opportunity to be here today. I'm a repeat violent offender. I was sentenced to over 200 years in prison. There was no reason for me to hold on to any shred of hope. What you hear over there, that's my son. That's the potential. He would not be here if I were not here today, if people did not believe in me and grant me the opportunity to be here. Now, what it took for me to be here today, that list of extraordinary and compelling achievements, in addition to a change in the law, that 924C law, which everyone agrees was unjust, it was not made retroactive. Therefore, I had no opportunity for recourse in the courts. Compassionate release gave me that vehicle, gave me that means. The list of extraordinary and compelling achievements, I don't think you can comprehend the challenges, the adversity that each of us up here had to endure and overcome simply living through those circumstances. The state of incarceration in this country is not meant to rehabilitate. What we accomplished is truly extraordinary. What I am asking the commission to please, to please do, is to set a standard, to set a high standard for those on the inside to aspire to, that will instill hope where there is currently little more than despair. Likewise, by setting that same standard, you send a clear message to the judiciary to give them the confidence to rule in a case like mine, where, to be honest, few judges in this country would take a chance on someone like me. To look at my criminal record, that would be the immediate disqualification, regardless of what I accomplished on the inside, the number of lives that I was able to positively impact. It took great courage on, on the course of my judge, Judge Gerald Pappert, to grant my compassionate release. It also took great compassion by Assistant U.S. Attorney Bob Zausmer to not only not oppose that release, that sentence, but to make the statement that he would not appeal, that the government would not appeal my sentence. What that did was it allowed my judge unfettered discretion, which the reality is that very, very rarely happens with judges today. Their rulings are left open to scrutiny, as we've seen with so many compassionate release cases. So I'm asking you, commissioners, to please set that standard, to have that courage to do the difficult thing, where the easy course would have been to deny my motion, where the easy course would be to set those restrictions and limitations that limit the number of individuals who are able to receive relief. I would not be here without the relentless pursuit of justice by my attorney, Sean Hopwood, who, because of his lived experience, is an advocate like no other. I am forever grateful to have people like him who believed in me, who built the relationships necessary with the U.S. Attorney's Office and with the judiciary that allowed me to be here today. And the second thing I want you to remember is the face of my young son, because he represents the potential that resides all across this country in our prisons. Given the opportunity, they too can do incredible things on this side. Thank you.
thank you all, uh, gentlemen and Ms. Uh, Levi. Any questions from any commissioners? Yeah, well, let's congratulate all of you on what you've accomplished since you were uh, released from custody. It's very impressive. I have two questions for Mr. Clausen. Mr. Clausen, during your testimony now, you referenced the standard we should set that it would inspire people. Could you tell me what, that, what you meant by the standard, what it would look like? And the other question I have for you is with respect to victims. There were clearly victims in your case. One of the victims was beaten, I think pistol whipped. How does that factor into the compassionate release equation? And, and how should judges consider the impact these crimes had on victims, particularly victims of violent crime? Very good question. Uh, and I'd like to begin, let me answer the, the second aspect first. Victims of crimes, I, I make very clear, I have deep regrets for all of the crimes that I committed, for all of the persons harmed. And it weighed heavy on me daily throughout the course of my incarceration. It was always a matter of, have I done enough time to serve the interests of justice? And have I done enough to give back, to balance out the scales of what I had taken from others? Believe me, that weighed heavy. And at some point, I felt after 20 years that hopefully those scales had at least been balanced, that I had given back, I had positively impacted more lives than I had harmed. And I would hope that 20 years was sufficient to serve the interest of justice for those persons who are harmed. I do wanna add that I believe most professionals within the US criminal justice system at this point have become desensitized to the amount of time that we give out. You've heard the terms served, the terms that were given to each of us up here. Those sentences are extreme. And it's, if you have never served one day in prison, you do not know what it means to endure those hardships. So for those accomplishments that each of us had on the inside, simply programming goes against social norms to have the courage to do that, to try and improve yourself under those conditions. I would hope that the commission could set a standard, as I said, where programming, where the significance of participating in the few programs that do exist, that you recognize the significance of such. Because it's not easy. It's not easy to do those things on the inside. And as far as a standard that it be just clear enough so that we have a, a guidepost. Those of us on the inside, especially individuals who are serving 924C sentences, where there's little to no hope, by creating a mechanism that instills hope, you can change the culture of the entire prison system. Let me just be clear. By creating this mechanism, Having that shred of hope changes everything. I was one of the few that believed I would at some point get a second chance. That I had people, family that believed in me. That allowed me to hold on to hope. I watched many others who were not that fortunate. So I asked that that standard be set, that it not be the accomplishments that I had because that would be unrealistic. I had to do things that had never been done before, never in Bureau of Prisons history. That's not a standard others can live up to. So that it be realistic and that judges have the discretion to credit, to give credit where that credit is due, where the scales have been balanced, where it is truly equitable and just. Thank you. All right, we are live. Look at this. We're in DC and it's 80 degrees. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. And it was just as hot in there inside the US Sentencing Commission. I don't know if anybody else was watching that live, but it's being broadcast live. I think we were just sweating. <laughs> I don't think it was Woo! it wasn't that hot they had the air on. We were just a little nervous because it was nap time. It was nap, it was time. For nap time. Yeah, once again, you know, the boss, youngest in the room. Uh, he set that president numerous times before. 
had an opportunity to get in there and advocate for all those who are still serving crazy sentences like I was. Man, the commission seemed very, very receptive. Obviously the testimony was well received. Man, full circle moment. This is one of my, you know, big goals, visions that I had from the inside to be able to do something like this, to advocate for others. Oh God, incredible. And it wasn't just Adam, it was a panel of six? There was five of us total. Five formerly incarcerated people who had equally as compelling stories. Yeah. Everybody did amazing. It was a little nerve wracking because it was nap time. So we had a cranky little guy, but I guess that made them notice him even more. It did. They needed to see him. He is uh, the epitome of, you know, what's possible when you give someone a second chance. So the way you even ended it, Adam said, remember his face. I was like, don't cry. Don't cry. Mm -hmm. All right. I think we got to go. We got to go. Uh, we love you guys. So grateful to be able to share this experience with you. If you're in the area or, man, if you got any uh, thoughts, comments, anything you want to talk about, we're here. Recommendations because we're starving. Yeah. Uh, here, here's the view. It's, it's phenomenal. Phenomenal. All right. We love you guys. Love you guys. Okay, bye-bye.